Hello and welcome to UK Fitness Hub. My name is Travis Tarrant and in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the causes and symptoms of wrist tendonitis, as well as going through some of the best treatments to start alleviating pain from home. Let's get into it. Tendons attach muscle to bone and itis means inflammation of. So in this case, tendonitis means inflammation of the tendons and then of course referring to the wrist in this case. So when we're talking about wrist tendonitis, we're talking about two main muscle groups, our forearm extensors and our forearm flexors. And the reason why these are important is because the muscles of our extensors and flexors run through the wrist and attach onto the hands and fingers. So they allow us to do movements like this, go into extension, flexion, ulnar deviation, radial deviation, and also as well, allow the hand to be able to come into supination and pronation. With wrist tendonitis, it depends on the type of injury you have to whether one tendon is inflamed or multiple at the same time. Some of the common symptoms of wrist tendonitis include pain and swelling at the wrist. You might have warmth from redness, a dull ache in the forearms, or they might feel really tight. It might be difficult to be able to do things like just general ranges of motion, as well as to grip onto things. So if we look at some of the common reasons of why people get wrist tendonitis, it's generally repetitive strain injuries. So this is doing the same thing over and over. So it might be somebody that's writing all day, typing all day, a carpenter, for example, that's using their hands all the time. And if we think about when a muscle gets tight, when it's overworked and stressed, the muscles become shorter, whether that's the forearm extensors or the flexors. When we've got a short muscle, it starts to pull onto the tendon and that can cause inflammation. If it's more of a one-off injury, it could be somebody falling with an extended arm, so more of a trauma-based injury, as well as, let's take for example, and quite a common one I see, um, guys in the gym doing bicep curls a little bit too heavy than they should be doing, stressing out the wrist tendons and also the forearms as well. So let's look at some of the best techniques that we can do with wrist tendonitis to start to manage pain and alleviate the symptoms. Massage therapy has been proven to be a great alternative to traditional pain management. For people suffering from tendonitis, it can help to relieve pain and speed up the recovery process. Since tendonitis can take weeks to heal, using a massage therapy program to both relax and strengthen the inflamed tendon can give the sufferer a better chance of a full and speedy recovery. Here, I use the webbing of my hand to wrap around the inner side of the forearm and begin to gently pinch my thumb and index finger into the forearm. I travel up the forearm before releasing pressure at the top and glide slowly back down to the bottom of the forearm and then repeat the process. This is a nice technique because it allows me to target not only the forearm extensor muscles, but also the forearm flexor muscles at the same time. Make sure you swap over the position of the hand as shown here, so you can target the outer forearm fibers as well. I would recommend doing this technique for three to five minutes. I must stress the importance, however, of keeping the technique gentle to begin with, especially if it's your first time doing self-massage. So when is it okay to do self-massage? As a guide, you shouldn't do massage within the first 72 hours of your initial injury, when you're at a high level of pain, or when the wrist is noticeably swollen or inflamed. It's not only important to massage the forearm, but also to massage the hand. Remember earlier how we spoke about the tendons of the forearm muscles attaching into the hands and fingers. Interlink your fingers together, then begin to glide your thumb in the direction of your wrist. As you massage, try and keep your wrist in a stable position. You can see here I'm using massage oil. I can't tell you what to use unfortunately, as there's people that might be allergic to certain oils or have skin conditions watching. However, I can tell you I myself am using Melrose massage oil. You can work in between each finger, the palm of the hand, and at the padding of the thumb. Work up to two minutes progressively, increasing pressure. If you want to try a deeper technique on the forearm, you can begin to use the ulnar border of your arm. To start, I place the forearm that I would like to massage against my quadricep. Then I apply pressure up the forearm, just like in technique one. This time, however, I'm using my ulnar border rather than the thumb and finger. 
by using the ulnar border, I can apply substantially more pressure. You can do this on one or both sides, depending on how your tendonitis affects your forearm. I prefer to go through both the forearm flexors and extensors. Remember that after massage, your body has to heal from the massage itself. So this isn't something that you would do every day. When the muscles of the forearm begin to get too tight, they can pull and tug on the tendons causing irritation. Massage helps to reduce areas of high muscle tension by increasing the temperature of the tissue, increasing blood circulation, and by removing waste products. When pain is felt by the body, the body's natural response is to tighten the surrounding muscles to protect the injury site. Massage can help to speed up the recovery process by interrupting this pain cycle. If your wrist tendonitis allows you to, you can start to stretch and strengthen the wrist in different ranges of motion. For the first range of motion, I have my forearm against something for support. Here, I'm using a bench. I'll make a fist with my hand and begin to drop my hand down, then slowly raise my hand back up. Only go to as far as is comfortable. This movement is called flexion and extension of the wrist. As you bring your wrist down, you're stretching the forearm extensors, and as you come back up, you're stretching the forearm flexors. Work up to 15 repetitions for two sets and take as long as you need in between sets to rest. In the same position as the previous exercise, you're now going to bring your hand into ulnar and radial deviations. Ulnar deviation is where the wrist moves towards the ulna, which is one of the bones of your forearm. In this example, when I move the wrist away from the body, the other bone of the forearm is known as the radius and radial deviation is movement towards the radius. In this example, when I bring the wrist towards the midline of my body, complete 16 repetitions in total for two sets. Our last range of movement exercise is pronation and supination. Supination describes the movement of rotating the forearm into a palm up position. Pronation describes the movement of rotating the forearm into a palm down position. This is best done in a seated position rather than on a bench as we need free movement of the forearm. I also like to have my hand straight for this exercise rather than making a fist. The whole point of these basic range of movement exercises is to mobilize the tendons, get the wrist moving and loosened up, improve range of motion and to get back to normal life quicker. These can be done as a warm up before strengthening exercises as well. Work up to 16 repetitions for two sets. If during the range of motion exercises you didn't feel a stretch in the forearm, you can try a more abrasive stretch. Here I am on my knees. I take my hands out in front of my body with my palms in contact with the floor and fingers pointing towards my body. I then begin to sit back with my hips until I feel a stretch in my forearm flexor. I can do exactly the same but on the back side of my hand to stretch out my forearm extensors. Hold the stretch for 30 seconds two times over. This stretch can be done at any time throughout the day. Most people like to do them first thing in the morning to decrease stiffness and before or after exercise programs. The last stage of recovery is to work on strengthening up the wrist in the ranges of motion we covered earlier. So to recap, those were flexion and extension, ulnar and radial deviation, and pronation and supination. This time you're gonna use a weight. You don't have to use a dumbbell, you can use anything. A few examples would be a tin of beans, tennis ball, jar of jam, resistance bands and so on. Stick to the rep ranges and sets you were doing previously and increase your chosen object's weight slowly and progressively. Make sure that you keep all the repetitions slow and controlled and if something feels too heavy try and pick something lighter. If you're having trouble with your grip there are ways to strengthen it back up. A good and simple way to do this is to place a small spongy ball in the palm of your hand and begin to squeeze into the ball. You can do this with a foam ball, tennis ball, stress ball, or even roll up a hand towel. Squeeze for five seconds before relaxing. Repeat this again for 20 repetitions for three sets over. So we've covered how to strengthen up your grip, wrist, and forearm, but what about the hand? Finally, we're gonna run through the last strengthening exercise, which is for the hand. You can use an elastic band or a hairband, bring your forefingers and thumb into contact with each other, and then place the band around all of your fingers and your thumb. Begin to slowly open up the hand and then return back to the starting position, completing 15 repetitions for two sets. 
And that concludes the end of today's video. Thank you very much for making it this far and watching. If you learned something new, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more free and educational content. If you've got any questions for me, don't hesitate to put them in the comments box below and I'll get back to them as soon as possible. My name's Travis Tarrant and you've been watching UK Fitness Hub. I'll see you soon.